Let's take a look real quick. We've got an engine hoist, carb off the engine, lift plate on the engine. Keep watching this video to find out why we went through all of this again. In a previous video, I mentioned doing an oil pan swap, getting the factory one out from under the car and doing a Champ Pan's oil pan. So that's actually what we're working on right now. We've got a lot of progress done on this part. So I wanted to kind of walk you through where we're at right now before we get everything buttoned back up and put back together. So we look over here, this is the factory oil pan. It is still in really good condition, but we wanted to do something a little different, something that had a bit of an upgrade to it. This Champ Pan's oil pan has a crankshaft scraper a windage tray and a trap door to help keep oil from flowing to the front of the oil pan when decelerating because the oil pump is in the back of the oil pan. So you wanna keep the oil back there so you can keep the oil pump into the engine. So we went ahead and got one of those. To get this swap done, we did have to take apart a good bit of the engine. Had to take the carburetor off in order to put the lift plate on. We unmounted the headers on the driver's side so they wouldn't interfere with the engine lifting up since they wrap under the power steering box. Valve covers had to come off so we had room to raise the engine up since it's gonna come up at an angle because it's still connected to the transmission. And had to take the fuel pump off here because we couldn't get to the bolt for the engine mount on this side. So we did a good bit of disassembly on this engine once again but we finally were able to get the engine raised up enough and had to do a little bit of adjustment under the car. So even with lifting the engine up in the engine bay, we still had trouble clearing the steering linkage right here. So we actually had to loosen and remove one of the nuts on the passenger side so we could push the linkage forward to give enough clearance to get the original oil pan out from under the car and then get this one in. So that's what we went through to get this swap completed. And thankfully we were able to get everything buttoned up. We ended up getting a brand new Felpro one piece rubber gasket for the oil pan. We read online that when you tighten the oil pan gaskets up, they have what's called a crush metal in the middle. They crushes and creates that seal. And when you take them off, they actually don't reseal really well if you reuse them multiple times. So we bought a brand new one, got that put on with the new oil pan. Now we're gonna take some time to get all this put back together. Maybe in this video, we'll do an engine crank, see how she runs, make sure nothing leaks. So make sure you keep watching to check out and see what stitch this 1970 Nova sounds like. Really the only thing that we ended up changing in the engine once we were getting everything back together is the location of the temperature sender. It used to be over here on the head and that sensor that we were using as I mentioned in a previous video was only for the light on the dash and not for the gauge itself so we ended up getting a new sensor for the gauge but it's not the right size to thread into the head. Apparently the new aluminum heads have a smaller hole with a different thread size for them. And we've had a lot of trouble finding the correct type of sending unit for the gauges that would fit in the head. So what we ended up doing was getting a new water neck and we've got one that has the threaded section in it for a temperature sending unit. So we moved it up here and we reran the wire it actually comes back from down there, runs through these cable holders that you can see bolted up right here, and then over here to that, so it still looks really clean. The other thing we've gotta get done before we crank it, well, we don't have to, but it would just make things a little more comfortable, is getting the seats back in the car. So let's get those seats in the car and see what we can do about getting this engine cranked finally.
We have the front seats back in the car. I excuse our covers. We're just trying to protect the hound's tooth from getting yeah. dirty here. Going to test the exterior lights since we changed those bulbs. It looks like we got all the exterior lights working. I think it's time we do a test fire and see if the engine cranks since we rebuilt the top end. Well, you heard it, the engine cranks. It actually runs really good for the most part. It cranks up almost immediately. Obviously that first crank you saw, it took a little second to get the fuel uh, in the engine and get everything sparked and going because it was the first time it cranked in a while. But after that, it cranked pretty much immediately every time we cranked it up to test fire. It is idling a little high, so we've got to do some timing and tuning just to get everything settled in the way it needs to be. But I'm really excited that the engine fired as quickly as it did and that it seems to be running really good overall. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. This is Southpaw Garage, signing out.